Bam! Yo, yo, time to get stuck into some of your questions today. Starting off with... Missed it. <laughs> hey, I need help. What do you think will be the best option for vlogging and corporate video? DJI Osmo RAW or Canon 5D Mark IV? Or well, neither are perfect for your requirements. DJI Osmo RAW, pros, smooth gimbal actions, cons, a bit fiddly to set up. Canon 5D Mark IV, pros, nice colors, dual pixel AF, now it's got C-Log. Cons, still got that crop factor. Doesn't have that tilty flippy screen for vlogging, which is incredibly useful, but it does look professional and that's the one I'd pick. So when these corporate people look at your setup, they think, oh yeah, professional, he's got a professional camera, as opposed to a camera that looks a bit like a dildo. Ah, uh, okay, this one's from the Isa 68. Bokeh Horn, still no Sony 100mm f2.8 STF lens review. You're not a real Bokeh Whore. <laughs> uh, is a 68 saying, oh, you're not a real Bokeh Oh, you, oh, oh, you, oh, you cheeky, cheeky, oh, you cheeky Bokeh. I'm the only whore in this place. But you've got a good point, which is why I'm going to do a review right now. Thank you for your message. They say it's a great lens for portrait, fashion, nature, and wedding photography. I say bollocks to wedding photography. Well, anyway, this Sony lens promises so much. It promises to be the king of bugger. But we can't just do a whole video about bokeh. Let's do the usual lensy type stuff first. Now, this is a G Master lens. It is a solidly built lens, I'll tell you that. It's an incredibly front heavy setup on the A7R2, but other than that, the feel of the lens is top notch. Smooth, smooth like butter. Butter and KY lubricating each other. But not only is it supposed to be the king of bokeh, but this is supposed to have extraordinary sharpness. And oh, is it sharp. It's capable of producing some mighty fine details. Some might not like their portraits like that, mind you. Even though it says f2.8 on the lens, the aperture ring only goes all the way to 5.6. But before you spaz out and take your lens back to the shop for a refund, it's T5.6, not F5.6. There's a difference. It's an F2.8 lens, but in terms of the amount of light that gets let through, it's more like 5.6 because of the apodization filter that's built into the lens on the front that essentially makes the bokeh look pretty. Don't you just love that smell of burning rubber? Probably smells like Hugh Hefner's bedroom. When you're shooting at bright light, it won't make a difference how much light it gathers. 5.6 is too bright even in this situation when I want some slow shutter panning shots. The good thing is that even shot wide open, this lens picks up all of the fine little details. You can crop in once, twice, and even more, and you'll see into how my brain works. Oh. It does focus incredibly fast. 
those people shooting sports won't be reaching for this lens, but at least know that the direct drive supersonic motor pulls focus quickly and neatly. I have to admit, I really... Shut up. I have to admit, I just realised this. Declicky goodness. It works nicely for video, even in continuous AF, not struggling to keep focus locked squarely on the subject. And the stabilisation works to keep handheld shots looking relatively shake free. Check this dude out, he wants to get in on the drifting action as well. But as good as it is in other areas, the thing that really stands out about this lens is the bulk here. This lens is designed for maximum bulkiness. This thing compromises on the light transmission in order to get the maximum bokeh. And the question is, is the... Bokeh. Bokeh. Or... Not bokeh. Okay. <laughs> Answer, yes, it's very okay. It's a magnitude 11 okay. It's not often that you see the out of focus elements disappear into the background with such splendor. The apodization filter is like a radial grad ND filter. It basically makes the outer perimeter of the out of focus elements less bright, so the edges of the blurry bits will be less pronounced. Simple, eh? Gooey, scrummy, delicious balls. That's what she said, but I'll say it too. The Borke possibly can't get much better than this. I'll happily put this on a Borke board at the top. Hmm, maybe that sticks out a little bit too much. Bam! Not sure why it ended up that colour though. Could another lens be better? Perhaps. We'll have to see next time. But for now, this lens is the king of bulker! Well, I don't know too much about drifting, but I know that's not going to do very well. Look at that! Ah, oh, just give up. Just give up, mate. That's embarrassing. Shocking. Yeah, go back.